and, and probably the most important person in the city government is our police chief, over there, as we said. And really, the two most important people, I think, probably are Patty and Judy. Yeah. <laughs> the um, I gotta say that uh, going into uh, city government, especially going into the mayor's office, we had many challenges. And uh, one of the biggest was uh, some legislation, especially the pension. Governor Manson came down early and met with me and, and uh, uh, he said, if you, if, if you could put together a program and we'll help you uh, with your legislature, your police and fire unions, uh, city council, and he said, I'll stand behind you and you get this taken care of. People, they've been picking the can, kicking the can along for, for several years. And we had an option to either going into bankruptcy, receivership, or, uh, or, or get some legislation. And, with, and, and I think the most important person involved in that was the governor. And I just, uh, I just want to publicly thank him for that, his help. And there's been other legislation that's come along. Many times, and I know this is nonpartisan, but I've told him he's one of our better Republican governors that we've had. So. <laughs> At any rate, he's, I consider him a friend. He, he's he's very, been very helpful to our office and in our city. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the, the governor of the great state of West Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. so much being able to be here on this day and to be able to acknowledge not only two great public servants but two good friends and it's something in today when you have people that have served the way that both uh, Bob and Adi have and become your friends too and it, it's pretty special so I, I really appreciate this it's an extra special day for me I look around I have so many friends in the, in the room and people that we've worked with and we continue to work with and I thank all of you all of you and there was uh, people in the room that believed in me uh, before it was popular to do that <laughs> and, and, and backed me and got involved and I appreciate so much that. Um, to, uh, to Patty uh, and, uh, and of course Judy and thinking about Mom Pearl and all the people that make a public, uh, a public commitment, you know, it's, it's I, I, I do my best every day to try to get people to get involved in public service. It's, it's, it's an honorable job, it's a great job, but uh, it's just it's a demanding job. And a lot of people won't do it. And a lot of people, their families don't support it. So when you have people that serve the distinction in the, in the length of time they have, you know it has to be good support. And that support means there's a lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of criticism, a lot of ridicule. Uh, I look at my wife, Gail, and uh, she wanted to be here, and she was, her schedule, she was trying to, but, you know, Gail didn't put her name on the ballot, but she gets as blamed for things as much as I do. Uh, your husband did this, or why did he do that, or this or that? So you have to be able to fend all that off and be able to say, you know what, at the end of the day, we did our best. And you can go to, uh, this is one of the greatest opportunities to have a job where you get up in the morning and be excited about helping somebody and making their life good. You can work like the dickens all day long and go to bed at night, have a fulfillment. You did something good. Yeah, public service gives you that opportunity. Not many places do. Thomas Carlyle said it best. The history of the world is but the biography of great men and women. It really is. The history is about biographies of what somebody did uh, and how they touched and how they changed. Uh, we're here to honor two people, uh, Bob and Adi, that have done that. Uh, they've done it and they've reached across, not just in Cavill, as you might think, but they reach out and I, I call on them quite a bit and Audie knows and from the sessions, I want to know what's going on, how we can make it better, how we can be fair, and uh, what we're doing right and wrong. Uh, Bob, from the different positions he's been in and the friendships that we've had and basically touching and reaching and tell me what works and what doesn't work and that's the feedback we need. Uh, and the bottom line is we've been working very hard. Uh, my administration for the last five and a half years, trying to give more autonomy back. And uh, Kim, I, I, and it's, this is not politics, it's not Democrat, Republican, and it's not, it's common sense, it's decency. It's working together as West Virginians, and that's really what it should be. We're all, 
be able to have our political differences from time. That makes it strong. That makes it exciting. That's the thing that Bob and Audie like it time to time. We all like it. But you know what? The difference in <coughs> us in West Virginia, the difference in Catholic County, there's a time to put that aside. There's a time to say, I'm American first. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm an American. I'm a West Virginian. And then you might be a Democrat or Republican. And almost in that order, too. Amen. <coughs> and when you do it that way, you'll make good decisions. And good people will make good decisions. These two have almost 100 years of experience in public service. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <coughs> but I was saying about, about uh, Kim, and uh, I've, I've been all day, all day in, in, in beautiful Huntington today, and went down to Wayne County and talked to them a little bit, but I spent most of all, all the day down here. And I was talking this morning, did a little interview with the paper, and I was telling them, I said, you know, basically, leaders have to leave. They just have to do it. It might not be popular. You walk away. You just, it's, sometimes it can be a very lonely job, but, you, but it, it needs to be done. Uh, I told Kim, I said, Kim, I need, uh, I need you to come down and fight for these bills. I said, I'm so proud of Huntington stuff. And I said, listen, you got to let me get rid of the old properties. And I think, uh, uh, Chief, uh, all the things you taught me, uh, the, the abandoned properties where all the crime and, and, and all the illicit drug trade goes on and everything else, you got to give us a chance to clean this mess up. You didn't say, okay, stay, come and do it for me. Just give me the tools to do it. And all what happens is you give people tools and they do it. And you came and I said, now we got to fight for this thing. Every time he'd come there, the council come there, uh, all of our friends here, all you, and, and, and uh, Bob or whoever, those had to be done. The burned out, we had another bill to burn. That came from you all, uh, the, the pension bill, uh, you know. Everybody's got to take care of the responsibility, but you got to take the shackles off and give you a chance to do it. And you did it. And I'm, I'm really proud. I really am. And, and the, the people want to help themselves. I, I've said this. Government, we're not your provider. The federal government should not be my provider for a state. The state should not be your provider for a county or, or a municipality. But by golly, we should be a good partner. And that's all it is. If we partner up, that means you've got something, I've got, we're working together. I'm not depending on you more than I would depend on myself. I told President Obama, I said, Mr. President, I don't want you to be my provider. You don't need to do that. Just be West Virginia's partner. We can make it. We're in the best shape about any state east of Mississippi. I don't think there's another state that can pay its bills like we can, take care of itself, and live within our means. But that's because of you all. You know, you look at West Virginians, they sit down at night and they say, guess what? We can't afford this. I've got to change this, and I can live within this parameter. Well, you know what? We in government have to do the same. That's all. And that's what we fight for every day, just the common sense, the responsibility, and running it the way it should be. Uh, and that's the reason I, I'm, I'm here today, because Bob and Audie have done that. It's one thing to talk the talk. It's another thing to walk it. And uh, so with that, uh, we're reminded Albert Einstein said, try not to become a person of success, but rather try to become a person of value. Everyone's so caught up in being successful, and they measure success in so many different ways. I said today, and I think Mike, we were there, and we were talking today, and I said, uh, I got to speak to about three or 400 of the students and business and business leaders, and I said, we're all proud of our environment. I was a privileged child, and they look at me, and I had a person with that and said, I bet, I bet you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. And I said, I was born in Farmington, West Virginia, a town of 500 old coal mines. There wasn't a silver spoon in the town. <laughs> Don't worry about somebody's mouth. <laughs> well, and, and they think, why would you be, consider yourself a person of privilege? Uh, well, I have unconditional love. I didn't have a big house. We were raised in a three-room garage apartment between the creek and the railroad tracks. So it wasn't a fancy neighborhood. But I still consider, like probably most of you, if you had unconditional love, and if you had a person who's willing to tell you right from wrong, you knew your mom would do it, your dad would do it, your grandma and grandpa would do it, your aunts and uncles would do it, your neighbors would do it, because they unconditionally loved you and wanted you to succeed. But so much anymore, we, we made you successful. What did you get? What do you got? You got the fanciest car in town, you got the biggest house in town, you know, the most expensive vacation. What have you really got? And how's your life measured? It's the value of what you've added to it. And Audi, I think you and Patty, and you're down there. Bob, you, you and Carol, and your mom and your family, these are people value. 
They gave more back and put more in, and they took out. So for that, I'm able to bestow upon them the highest award that I can as governor, which is a distinguished West Virginia. And this is something that is not done lightly. It's something that basically is recorded, and we keep it on record. And we don't get that many out. And it has to be someone who is truly a, has earned it and has deserved it. So I'll be happy to thank you. to say something. I'm, can you believe he asked a politician? <laughs> you, want to say something? you know, I'm truly honored to receive this award today. To receive uh, an award from any governor is something, an honor. But to, say, to receive an award from Governor Joe Manchin, who was recognized throughout the United States as one of the most outstanding governors today, it makes it a very special honor. I'm also honored today to be receiving this with award with Bob Bailey, who has contributed so many years of his life to public service. I'm honored today to be surrounded by my wife and my family, who spent so many years cheering for me when I was in the boxing ring, and so many years supporting me in public service. I was proud to be surrounded by my friends and my employees, who have worked so hard for me over the years to, to uh, in public service. So to my friends and my families, I thank you. To my wife, I thank you. And to Governor Go uh, Joe Manson, who has contributed so much to the state of West Virginia, I sincerely thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all the employees at Capital County Commission, all the courthouse employees, all my friends. You know, we have the greatest governor in the world, there's no doubt about it in my mind. You know, he's a man among men. He really is. And he does a whole lot for people, and he, he doesn't ask much in return, just that you boost West Virginia. And that's where I got it from working with people like Adi Aggins and Dan O'Hanlon, Scott Bay, 
advice some of the people on the commission. This is where I started my political career right here in this room, 1977, when I ran for city council. I ran with Harold Frankel and some other people, and we got elected, and we moved the city forward, and we hope we moved it a long way. And thank Mary Wolf for a good job that he's doing. Even though he's a Republican, he's doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to give him that credit. You know, I get it. I, I, <laughs> I like to give credit where it's due. But thank you from the bottom of my heart, and thank Audie Agnes for me just knowing Audie Agnes. Yeah, he, he's a great guy, and he's a he's a tough competitor when you talk about boxing. He's tough. You know, I see my old friend Bernard Queen and Nessa Rollison sitting together. Arm in arm, that's where you should be, fellas. <laughs> but I thank you for coming. I thank you for this award, and I hold it dearly and always will. And like I say, I think the governor is the greatest guy in the world and the best governor in the United States of America. Thank you, Governor. We certainly <laughs> thinking all the, the things and, 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 and how I, we've met and, 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 and our breakfasts at Tommy's house. Uh, remember that? All those? Tommy Jones's home, we had them breakfast. And Tommy, uh, when I became governor, Tommy said, uh, uh, can we have one at the uh, mansion? <laughs> Guess what? We've had everyone at the mansion <laughs> since then. It's been my honor. Edsel, I'll never forget. Edsel believed in me when no one else did. And, and we jumped out there, and I'll never forget the football game at Marshall, and that's when they weren't sure if, if I would help, you know, if I become governor, could they, since I come from the northern end of the state and went to Morgantown, could they really trust me? <laughs> I remember those days, and we're out there cooking hot dogs and giving them away. We were lucky to give them away back then. I mean, it was tough. I mean, they weren't quite sure if they were going to eat them or not from me, but everybody has been so wonderful. And Tommy, when Pumpkin, uh, down at the Pumpkin Festival, Tom, I've never seen so many pumpkins in my life. <laughs> um, and, and, and the things, and just so many. And Nick, uh, where's Nick at? Right Nick has been with me from day one. And, and just, and then, uh, and I don't know if you knew this, Dan swore me in. Dan, Dan was the official person who swore me in as governor, which was one minute after midnight, the day that I was going to be inaugurated and get sworn in. We do it the night before, and the reason the tradition is, no, a lot of people don't even know that. They do it traditionally because sometimes governors between that last day, there might be some shenanigans that would go on way back when, and that would pre prevent that from happening because the new governor had already been in by the time they got sworn in at 12, 1, 2, or 3 o'clock. So Dan came in on the steps of the mansion and swore me in, I appreciate that. But I, I just have so many wonderful friends here in this town, and Mike, the advice and, and the counsel Mike has given me, uh, Mike Perry for many, many years, and, and Judge, uh, friendship. Uh, you know, I know that they, you get razzed a little bit about having an R by your name, but you're still a good judge. <laughs> uh, but the bottom line is, is that's the main thing. Communities come together like this, and I think that's everything. It speaks volumes of you all being able to do that and brought, you know, taking the personal and pettiness out of it and do it for the order of the good. And, and I just think there's so much going to happen in this town, this community. I, I see so much potential. It's still one of the prettiest cities we have, not just in the state, but anywhere. Laid out, just gorgeous. We should just uh, all be proud. Get her back to where she was. I know Kim has given her everything he's got. I know his counsel is. I know the chief we've been, and I told him I'd give him I really appreciate the work he's doing with our state police and trying to give you all the tools you need and assets to do whatever it takes to clean up. Uh, and I've told him whoever's coming from Detroit for any other reason to get a good education, get back quick while you can. Because if we get our hands on you, you know, it ain't going to be pretty. Anyway, we're trying to do all we can to make this a better state. As long as you can keep good people involved in the political process, elected officials that really know who they're working for, for you and not them, you'll be fine. I always, my always thing is, 
it's not, people said, well, how do you know who to vote? How, you know, in elections, so many of us are asking you for your, for your help and your support and your vote. And, and, and Kenny, they said, how do you know who to vote for? I said, the first question you should ask a person why they want the job. They can't tell you, if they're not wrong for the time, I can do it, I can do it better. I can make sure that what we're doing is we're creating a better atmosphere, we're getting better opportunities, better economic, better education, better quality of life. If that doesn't roll off, then you got a problem. You got the wrong, you're very finding yourself another candidate. And these are guys that have always known exactly what they wanted to do and have always been able to do it. And that means working across the lines, working up in Charleston, working all the way across. But I think it's a better, we're a better community than probably we used to be. So it's my honor and pleasure to be able to be here today on behalf of my wife, the First Lady Gail, who's your friend, very close friends to you all. I appreciate she wanted me to bestow that upon you. Thank you, and you all are so lucky. I appreciate it. God bless.